Christians hate us. This is commendable. This is absolutely one of the most important ministries because it is bringing back that honor and that respect that God said when we have towards Israel, God will bless us. And so in the end time revival, in this context, the restoration of the hearts of the fathers and the sons or the children, the children of the fathers is the key so that the blessing can come in and not the curse. Now we understand because God relates to Israel with the word, I will curse those that curse you. I will utter a word of complete destruction, the word me'era, to those that klala you, to those that take you lightly and dishonor you. In other words, we see that the curse comes in because of dishonoring Israel as a parent because the same word is given to children that dishonor parents. We've mentioned a few scriptures earlier on in this series, and I'm going to mention one more scripture. So um, come with me also again to, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 27, verse 16. And again, we can see God repeating the issue of the importance of blessing parents and the curse that comes in when we don't bless the parents. And Deuteronomy 27, verse 6, 16, says, Cursed is he who dishonor his father or mother, and all the people shall say amen. Now, when we, when we see the word curse in the scriptures, this one, again, is me'era, which is the word of total destruction, death to those children that curse father and mother. I've spoken many times this, and I'm, I love to repeat this because this is such an issue in the 21st century. When my children uh, disrespect me, and that happens sometimes, my immediate reaction is, Lord, have mercy on my children because this is such a serious issue. And therefore, I suggest that you do exactly the same. If your children go and disrespect you, don't take that lightly and pass on it like nothing happened because I'll tell you, something happened. Because see, the laws of the Creator are eternal. The Ten Commandments are forever. It doesn't matter who will remove them from the schools or what. The Ten Commandments is what I call the heavenly constitution. You see, actually... (laughs) <laughs> there is no country, no nation that uh, can survive and can be at peace and in order without a constitution. And when the constitutional laws, let's say the constitutional laws of America are not uh, respected or of Israel or of any nation Mexico. If the constitutional laws are not respected, what we're going to have is chaos. It's chaos. And we can see it already today that there's been some constitutional laws that are being broken. And when they're being broken, disregarded, changed, manipulated, then we see chaos is coming in. In the same way, the Lord gave us the Ten Commandments And I call it the heavenly constitution. It is the foundation, the solid foundation on which our walk of faith stands. In other words, that gives us the solidity. There is no kingdom, no nation that can be built on anything but constitution. And so now the Lord speaks about this particular commandment in the constitution and he equates it to Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you, those that uh, relate to you as parents and honor you and bless you. They will be greatly blessed. Their life shall be long upon the earth. They will be prosperous. And we are going to talk later on in the series about some people that actually did that and they changed the course of history for themselves and for all of humanity. Now let's take a look at this context in Malachi when it says, I will turn, that Elijah the prophet will be the one to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. You know what? That is happening right now for you on camera, right this moment. You know why? Because I am Jewish. So I'm coming from the nation that is to be the mother to the nations. I am coming from Israel, from the nation that is to be the mother to the nations. I am a born-again Messianic Jewish bishop. By the way, the only woman Jewish bishop in the world today, which is uh, quite an interesting position for a Jew today, believe me. But I want to tell you that right now, right now, on camera, in front of you, this scripture is being fulfilled. 
Because God said he will send the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. When I am speaking to you the instruction coming from Yahweh Elohim, God the creator here from the scriptures from Israel, I'm actually doing it because I love you. I'm actually doing that because I want to convey the love of the Creator to you and I believe that the instruction that I have to give you as a born-again Jew filled with the Holy Spirit is a very important instruction because being the parents of the nations, Israel being the mother of the church, then, you know, parents are not there for decoration. They are there to instruct us. And um, I've mentioned and I will mention again during the time of the Council of Nicaea on the 4th century when the church of officially was divorced by Constantine and the officiating bishops at that time from the Jewish roots of the faith, they totally divorced themselves from the parenting of Israel, from the fatherhood of Israel, from the instruction that can come from the knowledge of the scriptures that the Jews have. You see, God gave the Jewish people the word. And we are assigned, therefore, to break the word open to the nations. And that's what I'm doing with you today. And that is feeding children. That is breaking the word open for the purpose of the children getting great nutrition and for the purpose of them getting whole. Hallelujah. And so when, when this is happening on camera with you right now, this Jew from Israel is speaking the word of God to you in the nations, that means that the spirit of Elijah has already worked in my life. It's worked in my life to restore my heart to the nations. You know, when I just freshly got saved, my husband used to call me his Gentile wife. Though I'm Jewish from mother and father and all my generations have been Jewish. And he called me his gentle wife because I had such a love for the nations. I had such a love for the Gentiles. It was like a supernatural thing because for the most part, many Jewish people are so afraid because of the persecution that has come from the nations and especially from Christians uh, against Jews in the name of Christ. And they don't want anything to know about Christians for the most part. And really, if you know the history so bloody all the way up to the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, that it's understandable. But in my case, though I come from a Spanish Jewish family and my family was expelled from Spain in 1492 from Toledo, Spain during the Spanish Inquisition. My family suffered a lot to be able to survive the Spanish Inquisition and they did not deny their Judaism like many others did. Many Jews uh, turned into Catholics uh, to escape the Spanish Inquisition and nevertheless they didn't escape it because um, when they discovered that they still kept Shabbat they still kept the dietary laws and commandments. They were executed anyways in the fires of the Inquisition. In my case, uh, my family escaped. We escaped to the area of Yugoslavia and then to Chile. And from Chile, we came finally returned to Israel. You see, for me as a Spanish Jew, anything about Christianity, anything about the cross should be scary. But you know, when I got saved, I actually got saved in a Catholic church. That's right. The Lord came to speak to me when I was guiding tourists inside of a Catholic church. If you want to know more about this testimony of salvation, you got to get my book, Yes, who is actually right now coming out in the United States for the first time published by Zulon Press Publishers. And it actually is called Yes, because I said yes to the Messiah in spite of all this residue of fear concerning Christianity and concerning the Christians. I just said yes because I knew that if I said yes, I live, and if I say no, I die. And so from that moment that I said yes to the Messiah, then I began to turn my heart towards the Gentiles, towards the nations, towards the Christians. I fell in love with all the Christians. And that was a supernatural occurrence, a supernatural love that God put in my heart. And from that moment, I began to have a great desire.